if we can start by uh, asking you your name and why you're here tonight. So I'm Gaspar Koenig, I'm a philosopher. I've been writing on uh, artificial intelligence lately, so I think that's why I'm invited on this panel. And it also happens that I live in London, not, not very far from here, in Ladbroke Grove. So you were cheap to get? Oh, very cheap, yes, yes. I even uh, walked my way in. So. <laughs> what can uh, technology meet? Let me phrase that again. How, how, how can philosophy deal with the vast technological revolutions of our time? Well, first of all, I think it's a, it's a duty for philosophers and intellectuals to try to understand what's happening. And as I think I did, to go to the places where it's happening, to discuss with people who are actually shaping our future, future world. Um, I mean, and it takes a toll because obviously it's, uh, you know, I didn't know anything about, about technology. It's a very dry subject. But you have to do that. I mean, when Adam Smith was writing The Wealth of Nations, he was living in Edinburgh in the middle of the Industrial Revolution. So he had a, 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 a natural feeling for what was happening. So we need to do that. And we need to um, you know, do that, that sort of get our, our hands dirty in understanding what algorithm bloody means. Uh, and then try to find the underlying principles, both in terms of uh, you know, epistemology, but also in terms of political philosophy, because those algorithms are not neutral. And we need to understand, you know, um, how our behaviors are actually influenced by those who make the algorithms and what we can do about it. Are we in a new age of philosophy now then? Well, no, those questions are very ancient. And I was surprised to see that uh, you know, the problems that arise, especially the problem of uh, determinism again versus free will, is a problem that dates back to the Greeks and went through the Middle Ages. Uh, so what we need to do is really to reactivate our ancient texts. Take Leibniz, for instance. Leibniz was probably one of the first to think about, about AI and to try to sort of digitalize uh, the world to, to, to make it competitionable. Uh, so we have to draw from that ancient philosophy and reactivate it to interpret the world of today. I think this morning you spoke to the students, the young students uh, at the Lycée uh, near, here, near the French Institute here. How do you find their ideas as digital natives born from a different age uh, match with yours or, 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 or point to a future? Well, first of all, the, I was quite, quite surprised and very pleased that they are so aware of those issues and they seem to be quite, quite interested in discussing them. Also, I think it's, it's a new generation now. So it's not the generation of, of digital natives. It's a generation that comes just after. And so they are already in the middle of, of, the, of the tech clash. And I find they are more careful in their approach to technology than their elders, and maybe those who are 25 today. I mean, the students, for instance, in the university, they are 25, and they're totally addicted to any possible app. You know, they're biologically addicted. They just cannot leave their phones. It may be that this generation is, is starting to, to behave a bit differently and to be a bit more cautious, to understand. They were perfectly aware, for instance, when I asked them, how do you think Facebook makes money? They were perfectly aware that Facebook makes money through their data. You know, there was no question about it. And I think you would have asked the same question five years ago. People just wouldn't, wouldn't really bother about it. And just before you go, I guess, by you have your panel to do. Uh, when you think about Europe, what do you think about? Well, I think Europe has really a role to play to uh, at least regulate those technologies. Uh, the GDPR, the European regulation, uh, is for me something that was pretty uh, the right thing to do. But now we, go, we need to go further and we need to, to establish property rights on our personal data, which is something that has been done anywhere in the world. So nowhere in the world do you own your own data. And I think that what our European tradition of uh, ownership rights on goods, but also on intellectual property, on authorship rights, would allow us to, f to find the right regulatory and conceptual means uh, to, to reach certain objective. And uh, the, the European Commission with uh, uh, you know, persons like Margrethe Vestager is perfectly suited to do that. Well, uh, that's a, a good radical idea for the Night of Ideas, and you've got a panel to go and explain that to, so I'm going to let you go. Gaspar Koenig, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.